Hi guys, this is possibly going to be an annoying video because I'm on a swivel chair and there's going to be a lot of this happening. Um, I will try very hard not to do that because even I'm irritated by that and I don't have to watch this. So guys, today is a proper Warrior Wednesday video but it's going to be unedited because you guys seem to be responding really well to me just sitting and chatting to you and not chopping it up and editing. So. We'll do a few of these. It's on the MacBook because where I am has super fast internet, so we're just gonna film this baby and pop it straight up. Today I wanna talk about something that you guys have asked me about, especially recently because I've been talking about it more recently, but it is something that I've discussed before, and that is positive control. This isn't some kind of like therapy term or whatever, it could be, but it's just how I refer to the way that I exhibit control which is something I need because it was a huge part of why I got an eating disorder because I didn't have a sense of control and that was how I exhibited that control negatively um, so especially because of what has been happening lately with just a couple of behaviors popping up and the fact that I've identified that it has a lot to do with the huge amount of time that I have at work because my work is too chill for words and I'm filling that space with negative thoughts and over analyzing things because I don't have structure and I don't have routine and that's sort of my idea of what positive control is is having structure and routine and making choices for yourself and having a sense of autonomy over your choices and your decisions and you're doing these things because it makes you feel good and it makes you feel like you are centered and you are secure. So a huge part of why I got sick is because I was going through something where I had no control over what was happening and the metaphor I have always used is it felt like like a rug had been pulled from under me. It really felt like the world had imploded but um, it just was a jarring, horrible, tumbling feeling and I couldn't catch myself because I had no influence or control over the circumstances that were basically just like ripping my world apart. And that has a lot to do with why at that time I started to use eating disorder behavior, which I learned therapy. I didn't even for a long time realize these things were interlinked. How obvious, right? But yeah, that's why I love therapy because those things which look so obvious, we just deny, deny, deny. And it just heals a lot to realize why we do what we do and where it all comes from. So for me, positive control, as I said, and have said previously, is being punctual. I never used to be punctual. I used to be very, very disorganized. Um, but I'm punctual to the point where it's ridiculous. I'm early. I am early by 15 minutes for my train every morning because I want to go and get a coffee. And even if I wanted to get a coffee and be on time for the train, I could probably leave home like 10 minutes later, but it makes me feel good and secure and centered and it starts my day off well. Um, having routine, having a sense of where I'm going to be, planning my week out, not doing things sort of last minute. It's really great to be spontaneous, but that really throws me off and gives me a sense of anxiety. It doesn't mean that I can't say yes to a drink after work or, I don't know, like, do you want to go to the beach last minute? Yes, of course, I can do those things. But I have to know that hand in hand with that, it can make me feel very anxious and it can make me want to withdraw. And when I feel like I can and I can process it, I push back against that anxiety and that reluctance. But if I feel like it's going to give me social anxiety or whatever, then I won't force myself to do it. So that's sort of like on a case-by-case -case basis. Positive control for me is also in terms of exercise. That's a big one for me because I always thought that I was in control of my compulsion and need to exercise and was always very proud of how fit I was. And even though it wasn't fitness, it was illness and I used to run when my eating disorder wanted me to run and listen to the eating disorder, listen to the abuse, listen to the insults that were propelling me to run faster with less in my stomach, no fuel, no food or very little. Um, 
and so that was the eating disorder's choice and that was the eating disorder compelling me to do something which if I was well I really wouldn't want to do and really wouldn't tolerate I wouldn't tolerate like a voice in my head or anybody else telling me that I am revolting and hideous and ugly and fat and if I don't run faster then no one's ever going to love me and I am literally just going to die alone um and so now with my exercise, I am very, very particular about when I'm going to go for a run, why I'm going to go for a run. I will, if I have any sense that I'm doing it for any reason other than to feel good, I just say I'm not going. Um, I've done that recently. I have not been exercising for the last probably a week or so with everything that's been going on because I'm like, nah, you know what, I'm taking back this element of what I have power over and what I have control over and I'm going to do a positive thing and not that I was even uh, exercising excessively but it was just like no you know what we're just going to go back to zero to a plateau and then once I'm getting better and everything's sort of getting back to normal we can build back up from there so I guess it's just trying to flip what was eating disorder control into something which is anti-eating disorder, anti-anxiety, anti-feeling like crap about myself. It's making conscious effort and conscious decisions and planning and making sure that I do my shopping once a week and I'm not left not being sure what's in the fridge or like that's a big, big thing for me is that I have to know like what I'm – going to eat every, not so much what I eat during the day but every night for dinner I need to know what I'm going to eat that night and I don't have like lists or anything it's all just in my head that I know I've got this and I've got that and that's what I'm going to eat because if I'm left in a position probably not so much now but when I was first getting better that needing to know like what I had in the fridge and what I was going to eat was so important because I couldn't I couldn't make a decision outside of that I probably could now but just having that routine again and that sense of control and that sense of structure makes me feel good still. It's less that I can't cope without it. It's more that it just makes me feel calm and measured. So what's the point of all this positive control stuff that I talk about and what is, you know, the end game of it? I have always wanted to be calm. If there's a word where people, you know, say, if you could, like, in one word, what do you want to be? I'm like, calm. I want to be calm. I want to be chilled out as much as possible. I'm not going to be chilled out 24-7, but as much as I can possibly manage, I want to be a calm person. And the reason why is that I haven't known a lot of calm in my life, in my surroundings, in my relationships, in my every sphere really I haven't known calm like I, I've always wanted to raise my kids for a period of time like on the coast or something or somewhere that's not just manic and rushing and just like up to here with adrenaline and like I know that my personality is prone to being quite manic at times and then I can be really really chilled out as well but I'm more prone to the manic part of my personality. Um, just because I am an anxious, at times, wound up kind of person. People wouldn't know that to know me in real life, but I have to talk myself out of a lot of states of anxiety and social anxiety, particularly people who, I, if any of my friends are watching this, they're like, no, that's not accurate. And I'm, those who know me well enough who I've confided in will be like, yeah, okay, that's actually accurate because I've seen the dark side of what she's talking about. But I can be very, very socially anxious. I just hide it really, really well. Often the most secure looking person in the room in terms of their attitude and their um, personality, how it's coming across, is quite often the person who's going like to the most effort in here to be like, be normal, be normal, be normal. Don't show them that you're completely flipping out right now. So um, 
yeah, just anything that I can do to keep myself as calm and as level as possible and structure, structure, structure and control and routine is absolutely essential to me being as calm as much as I can. Um, as calm as much as I can. I don't think that makes sense. As calm as I can be, as often as I can be. There we go. Again, not editing. It's fun. Um, so, yeah, just doing anything to yeah give myself a semblance of control that is not negative or unhealthy or hurting myself and replaces that old eating disorder control behavior is essential for me. And just knowing where I'm going to be and what I'm going to do and what I'm going to wear. And I don't think I'm a controlling person of other people. I'm a live and let live kind of person because I don't want anybody looking over in my backyard telling, I don't like to be told how to behave um, because I don't like to be controlled as much as I don't want to control other people. Um, But I have to be able to give myself structure and give myself, and manage my expectations like a child basically you know how they say about children like they need structure and they need a certain amount of sleep and they need to know that like they're loved and taken care of I'm basically parenting myself that's what my positive control boils down to I am treating myself like a three and a half year old so guys I don't know if that's helpful I don't know if that's even a common thing in eating disorders. That's not something I've ever even really like discussed with my psychologist. It's just something I have found myself doing over time. So I share it with you because it's made a difference to me. Uh, If you guys do anything like that, or if that is like a proper tip that you've been given um, genuinely by someone else, I'd love to hear it. Uh, Not that I think I came up with it, just that I started talking about positive control and I was like, oh, I should probably tell them this isn't something that's something I've read in a textbook or something someone's told me. It has no, it may may have no meaning, Um, but to me, that's, that's what its definition is. And I'd love to hear from you if you found that you started to put yourself into a structure and into routine because it helped you to defeat your eating disorder because it was a huge contributing factor to my recovery and continues to be and now I'm waffling can you tell it's gonna be three minutes of this I wouldn't do that to you so guys as an update uh, doing a whole lot better and starting to see that I need to make a few changes over the next couple of months just in terms of my uh, attitude and my environment and just getting myself back to a place where I'm not just happy as much as I can be but also that I'm looking forward to things that I am hopeful that is very important to me that I feel energized and hopeful and motivated and like how amazing is life not that you can feel like that all the time but I like to feel like that a little bit more than I do currently so still working on a few things to get there and been doing so much writing I mentioned that in the last um, in the last video I've written almost 12,000 words in a week which I would struggle to do that but I can't find enough time to write more it's all I want to do is sit in front of the laptop and just write what I'm going to do I'm going to link in the description box below to a couple of pages from my Tumblr where I've put a couple of passages from my writing. I'd love if you guys went and read it if you'd like to. Um, And yeah, just give it a read. Let me know if it's something that you'd like to read in its entirety one day because that I'm already quite motivated to finish it and to hopefully potentially get it published. But if it's something that speaks to you, I'd love to hear from you guys and um, yeah, I'll keep, I'll keep working on it. It's giving me a lot of clarity on a lot of things. It's giving me, it's just, like I said, pouring out of me and I wake up and I'm excited to read again what I wrote the day before and to add to it and keep writing. So uh, check out those links in the description box below. Come and find me on Instagram and Twitter under what Mia did next. Uh, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you guys Will I see you this weekend? I'm going away with my family.
Possibly not. I will try, but if not, then I'll see you guys next week. And in the meantime, as always, much love and take care. Bye.